in times like these, you need the Bible. I need the Bible. We need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, God's only son. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. John Gospels chapter 4 is where we at this morning. And verse 28 and verse 29, the woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the man, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Hmm. A personal testimony of what Jesus Christ has done for me, what he has done for you. Now, what method one should use when one given a personal testimony? What are the methods that one should use? I looked at this and I've noticed that there are at least five things in, in which that I can share with you. I go back to chapter 4 of John and read verse 28 and 29 for you. The woman then left her water pots, went her way into the city, and saith unto the man, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Hmm. I look at this portion of scripture and we can see the method or the way that the woman gave her testimony. The first thing I noticed that she left her water pots and went away into the city and said unto the man. She left her water pots and went into the city just to tell about it. That's why she went. She left the water pots at the well. Didn't even bother about taking the water with her. And she ran into the city just to tell them about what happened. Sometimes we would like to give our testimony, but we are afraid. We, you know, we don't have nobody to go with us. Sometimes we want to go on Saturday, and if we cannot get to go on Saturday, we don't give our testimony. Sometimes we figure that there are so much of things that we got to do that we cannot leave those things and go and do those things. But notice what she did first of all. She made it her priority. You and I must make it our priority. Her original concern was to draw water. But now her concern changed from drawing water to be a witness. Too often we put witnessing or soul winning second or third. Sometimes last when it should be number one. She made this her priority. In John chapter 1 and verse number 41, the Bible says, He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is the Christ. Over and over we are told that he should be number one. Andrew, after he gave his life to Christ, he went looking for his brother. He made it his priority to find his brother Peter and bring him to Christ. Not only that she made it her priority, I have noticed that she was honest about it. She did not make a casual appeal. It was an honest appeal. Boy, this thing was, was born in this woman so much that she left everything and turned off. I believe she turned off her running. I don't even know if she had shoes on her feet. She did not make it a, a casual appeal, as I said, but an honest appeal. In chapter 4, verse 29, she said, Come, come with me. I will take you to him. Come see a man who told me all things that ever I did. 
come see a man who told me everything about me and I never met him before. Come see if this is not the Christ. Come see for yourself. Come see the Messiah. Hmm. In John chapter 9 and verse number 4, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. We must make it priority and we must make sure that we are honest about it. Notice something else. This woman look for others to tell. Hmm. She look for others to tell. Look, the method that she used, she looked for others to tell. First, she went looking for these men. She did not wait until they met with her. She made it her business to go look for them. The woman left her water pots and went her way into the city and say unto the men, no doubt she knew who she was looking for and where they would be found. No doubt she hurried because she had an important message. She did not allow her past to keep her back. Sometimes, because of our past, and the people that we must now witness to know a little about our past, we are ashamed to go and witness. That's a trick of the devil. Notice who she went to. She didn't go to ladies. The Bible said she had five of those. She went to the men. Men, you know, there are some ladies prefer to have male figures as their friends. She went to the men. She didn't allow the past to keep her back. She did not allow her fear to keep her back. What they would say or how they would treat her, she did not allow that to keep her back because there are some people that are so fearful. They're afraid to speak for the Lord. But hear them speaking for the devil. Ooh. She did not allow rejection to keep her back. You know, sometimes when you go to witness to someone and witnessing to that someone, they make all type of fun of you and reject you. Look you, but well, you met Jesus. Look you, but you saved. Look you. Hmm. She did not allow her daily task to keep her back. What did she do with the water pots? She left them there. But more important, she did not allow the devil to keep her back. Too many times you want to share our testimony. But we allow things to keep us quiet until the time has passed. When she found them, she used her mouth. She spoke to them. She said to the men, verse 29 of chapter 4, Come see a man who told me all things. Come see if this is not the Christ. Yes, our lives are to be living testimonies. But sometimes that takes a while for others to see the difference. Notice, as soon as she met the Savior, she was anxious to share with others her experience. That's the time one is excited to tell. That's the time the Holy Spirit speaks through you. Notice she knew little about the word, so there wasn't much to argue about. She made him the center of our conversation and not herself. She said, come see this man. Anything in a question that they had, she said, let's go by him. He will answer. When you give your testimony, remember that he's the one who should be lifted up. He's the one that you and I should be making look good and not ourselves. If a life has been changed, always bear in mind, it's not you, it is not me. It is the God that is in us that has changed our lives. So our testimony should be about him 
even if we use ourselves as an example of what he does when he comes in. Don't be afraid. Give your testimony. You'll be surprised one of these days when you stand in the kingdom. There'll be those standing there that will look at you and say, thank you. I believe that there are people in other parts of the world who have heard my voice, who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And they spoke to others who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And Paul said, what is my hope, joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not you in the presence of the Lord? One of these days when we get heaven, we will see those there to whom we witness to, whether by preaching or by a personal testimony. Father, encourage us. Use us there, God, and help us to encourage others to give their personal testimony. And Lord, help us not only to speak about it, but help us to live it, dear Father, that others will be convinced that Christ is alive. Thank you, O oh God, for your word. Bless it to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you. Have a great day as you go out and serve the Lord. Be encouraged. Remember these words as you speak to others about Christ.